Mr. Jesse Blackwell. Mr. Blackwell, we are here today. Um, looks like we are conducting a bond hearing. Yes, Your Honor. So let me go over a few things with you. You should be able to see me on your screen. Of course, I'm wearing the black robe. You should also have a screen that says, um, it's in the name of Ms. Timmons, who is your attorney. You see her in the green dress. On that same screen, you will see here in the courtroom with me is Mr. Finney, who is our solicitor. He's the prosecutor in your case. We'd like to do your bond hearing today over um, the virtual courtroom. <coughs> Sir, you have the right to have this take place in person with all of us together in the courtroom. Or you can wave that right and we can have your bond hearing today by video. Okay, I'm probably going to mute you while I hear from other folks. If at any time you can't hear what we're saying, if you can please just Wave your hand and I'll make sure that we go back and that you can hear everything, okay? Okay, let me unmute the podium there and turn my volume down so we don't get an echo. Yes, sir. Please quote you on. This is uh, True Bill Indictment 2021 GS430964 charging Jesse Dean Blackwell with two violations of South Carolina law, count two, criminal conspiracy, and count three, accessory before the fact to a felony. On or about December 14, 2020, Mr. Tanner Harris, who was an inmate in the South Carolina Department of Corrections uh, in a local institution in Water Reed, uh, was killed by a, what we, what we have alleged is a man by the name of Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown, we believe, was aided and abetted in the killing by Mr. Blackwell and two other men uh, who have been charged in the indictment that's pending. Mr. Blackwell is currently a, still in the Department of Corrections. Uh, he is from Spartanburg County and he has been serving a four-year sentence for possession of meth and felonies, visual traffic offense, and being stopped for a police officer. And his attorney has asked for a bond on the pending charges. Okay, Ms. Smith, Ms. Timmons. Yes, yes, Your Honor, thank you, may it please the court. Judge, we would ask for a $20,000 surety bond. Um, Mr. Blackwell, if he's released, he will reside at uh, 120 River Bluff uh, Drive at Inman. That's where uh, his uh, family is from. Uh, Your Honor, he is in prison currently serving four-year prison sentence for habitual traffic offender charges, uh, possession of meth, second offense, and fair to stop for a blue line. Uh, Your Honor, um, Mr. Blackwood is a hardworking man. He, uh, prior to his serving prison sentence, he worked in construction. Uh, then at SCDC, he worked as a kitchen helper. Now, as a result of these allegations, he's on lockdown, so he cannot work, but he tells me that uh, he, uh, I guess his trade is mechanic, so whenever he, he eventually is released, he will be planning to open his own business jar. Uh, he's 35 years old. He's a center. Excuse me, not Sumter. He's a South Carolina born and raised. Uh, uh, however, most of his family is in the uh, Spartanburg area of uh, South Carolina. And Judge, um, I guess the allegations of the state in this case are that Mr. Blackwell, along with another defendant, lured victim into a bathroom at SCDC, and that's where um, I believe uh, inmate Brown was. Uh, Kill um, Harris. Your Honor, um, my client, he, he struggles with drug addiction. That's, um, I guess he frequently smokes marijuana, even at SCDC. So um, he maintains his innocence on these charges. And based on those facts, you would ask Your Honor to set a jury trial. Anything else for the I, Your Honor, I would like to hand up his uh, inmate record showing the sentences that he is now serving and also the 
disciplinary actions that have occurred since 12-1-2020. It looks like there are five different violations in the year 2020, all of them involved in the use of narcotics while in prison. I also would like to hand up his NCIC. He has an extensive record. Going back to the year 2003, uh, it does seem like he is a habitual drug abuser, and the allegations in this case are that they lured Mr. Harris back to an area or having something to do with drugs, maybe the payment of drugs, non-payment of drugs, and Mr. Brown, through his main defendant, uh, beat him with a handmade tool of some kind, a tool of some kind, until it cost his death. They then, several of them carried Mr. Harris to his cell to cover up the fact that they had done this bodily harm to him. Uh, Mr. Harris's wife and mother are on the, on the call with us today. They may have something to say. They are very strongly against the bond, as is the state. I believe that we have some difference of opinion on that, but I do believe that we have uh, information from SCDC that his max out date is in October of this year. And I would like to see his bond stay denied until that point and give the state a chance to put this case together and see what he wants to do uh, with the, the, the charges. And I see a Terry Harris and Brett Kowalski. That's the mother. And would y'all, I'm glad you Thank you all, Harris family. I, I appreciate it. I firmly believe that um, when folks get sent to SCDC, that they deserve to be able to serve that time out without being afraid of being attacked or abused by either inmates or guards. Um, we should be able to keep drugs out of prison. So it's real frustrating to me as a judge to think um, when I send somebody to, to prison, I, I want to know that they're going to be safe there. Um, and so I'm just so sorry for what your family's gone through. Thank y'all for just fading. One more thing, y'all. Just want you to know the co defendant Brown. Bond was denied on him on January 18th this year. Um, let me just take a look at the materials that you passed up to. Okay. Um, Mr. Blackwell, I'm looking at your criminal history, sir. It doesn't really paint a great picture here. Um, and I'm also looking at your record while you've been in the Department of Corrections, which also does not paint a great picture. Um, it looks like you've got a pretty significant drug problem that's been causing you problems for a long time. Um, I'm going to continue to deny the bond at this point. Um, I understand the max out is in October. But when um, he has reached his max out date, that this can be reconsidered. Your Honor, Go ahead. Uh, Mr. Black, uh, excuse me, Mr. Blackwell, my exact date is October 2022. However, Mr. Blackwell is under the impression, and I believe that's uh, also on his <coughs> SCDC record, that he may be released possibly in April 16 of 2022. So in case this will be the day that he's released, um, if they release him, my understanding is they would bring him to Sumter. Um, and if this is the only thing holding him, then you can request reconsideration. But um, given the fact that he has, I don't even know how many, very stock for blue lights, habitual traffic offenders, um, I mean, I think I lost track of how many very stock for blue lights. He doesn't look like a great candidate for showing up for court. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. May it please the court, Your Honor. Your Honor, before you is Joshua Avins. Uh, Your Honor, this is um, two or three indictments before the court. 
Uh, the first one is True Bill 2022 GS43183 for possession with intent to distribute. Uh, that would be methamphetamine. Uh, Your Honor, the next two are 2022 GS43282 and 284. Uh, those are both waiver indictments. Uh, the first is for grand larceny value over $10,000. The second is grand larceny $2,000 to $10,000. Uh, Your Honor, uh, he is initial the sentencing sheets and sound indictments on both of those indicating he weighs presented to the grand jury. Your Honor, these are um, the third in the co-defendant line uh, of the um, air conditioning theft. Um, Your Honor, to pass to, we had recommended probation, drug court, and restitution joint several. Uh, and that was a similar offer we had Mr. Aiden by the informed by the defense counsel that he would prefer to just do straight time, that he would not be successful in probation. I've already informed the defense attorneys for the other two individuals. They're pretty much going to get stuck with a bag on the costs, and they understand that that's the nature of joint several liability. Um, but uh, we are, because he wants to just do straight time, we're going to wrap in two years in the Department of Corrections. Commissioner Roach. Yes. Sir, would you advance those? Raise your right hand and stick to Possession with intent to distribute methamphetamine, first offense. That carries. Up to fifteen to twenty-five thousand dollars now. I don't think I wrote it on these in my policies. Is that your understanding as well? Yes. And then also a grand larceny with the value of ten thousand dollars or more. Zero to ten year offense and or fine for discretion. The two to ten is a zero to five year and a fine and or fine for discretion. And is that your understanding as well? Yes. And you've had a chance to discuss your decision to enter this plea today with your attorney? Yes, ma'am. And are you satisfied with what Mr. Ratzon has done for you? Yes, ma'am. Are you under the influence of any drugs or alcohol today? No, ma'am. Has anyone promised you anything to try to get you to plead guilty? No, ma'am. Has anybody forced you, threatened you, or coerced you in any way? No, ma'am. Your case has not yet been presented to the grand jury. After I take your plea today, it means your case will not go to the grand jury. Well, it looks like your possession with intent to distribute methamphetamine did go to the grand jury, but the others have not. And you understand after today you will waive that right, but your case will not go to the grand jury. Yes, you understand that? Yes, Knowing all of your rights, Mr. Aiden, are you thinking guilty or not guilty? Yes, okay. um, your Honor, may I please report, beginning with uh, the indictment for the methamphetamine, um, Your Honor, law court responded. Uh, to what sounded like gunshots being fired while we were investigating this. They come, came up to a vehicle. Aiden was within the vehicle along with two other individuals. Uh, they noticed not knowing their shell casings around this truck. Uh, the, of no, nobody appeared to be hurt or anything like that. They were just responding just to the sounds. Um, and when law enforcement got out of it, were given consent by the owner of the truck, Mr. Postman, to search the vehicle. Located on the floorboard right next to Mr. Aiden's foot was a bag that was suspected to be methamphetamine. Your Honor, to be clear, this hasn't been tested yet, but it was suspected to be on seven grams. Um, and at that point in time, um, Mr. Aiden was Mirandized and he claimed ownership of the methamphetamine. Um, that would be the same case on that particular case. Uh, Your Honor, the other two, um, you've already heard these facts, but I'll just kind of go on and protect the record. Uh, Your Honor, there was um, a theft of an air conditioning unit at the UPS store here in Sumter that was. Aiden was within the vehicle along with two other individuals. Uh, they noticed not knowing their shell casings around this truck. Uh, the, of no, nobody appeared to be hurt or anything like that. They were just responding just to the sounds. Um, and when law enforcement got out of it, were given consent by the owner of the truck, Mr. Postman, to search the vehicle. Located on the floorboard right next to Mr. Aiden's foot was a bag that was suspected to be methamphetamine. Your Honor, to be clear, this hasn't been tested yet, but it was just had to be on seven grounds. Um, and at that point in time, um, Aiden was Mirandized and he claimed ownership of the methamphetamine. Um, that would be the same case on that particular case. Uh, Your Honor, the other two, um, you've already heard these facts, but I'll just kind of go on and protect the record. Uh, Your Honor, there was um, a theft of an air conditioning unit at the UPS store here in Sumter. This was um, November 14, 2021. Law enforcement watches the video. Um, they were able to identify three individuals. Um, witnesses began coming forward. Um, saying that they had heard Mr. Avens along with one of the co-defendants talking about how they had been stealing um, air conditioning units and how they had also already staged the air conditioning thefts at the First Citizens Bank, uh, but um, they just had to get a truck to get rid of it. They go and law enforcement goes and looks at those. They do notice uh, pertaining to indictment um, 22282 uh, that the three air conditioning units had already been cut off and were staged. Uh, for the theft, uh, ultimately law enforcement they would recover those. 
uh, and reattach them, uh, which was um, 3,000 restitution that's been ordered. The other credit then is the air conditioning unit, the UPS. They have video of the incident and uh, confessions um, by uh, the defendants admitting uh, to their responsibility and identifying themselves in the photos taken that air conditioning unit. Your Honor, on that particular charge, he's pleading under North Carolina versus Alfred. I have explained to him that means he's choosing not to admit guilt, but he wants to accept the state's bargain. And he also realizes that uh, this is an actual conviction. It will not be any different than any other conviction. And I explained that. And Your Honor, I completely forgot. Mr. Rousland did inform me of that. I just uh, that was pertaining to the First Citizens Bank theft, which is the three air conditioning units, and that's 282. My apologies. No, I'm sorry, that's the First Citizens. Uh, that's right, that's first citizens. But that um, but the offer which would be um, consideration for accepting that is it just a straight two year business and strong for everything. Okay. So with respect to the grand larceny charge at the UPS store and with respect to the possession of intent to distribute methamphetamine, sir, are those facts true? Yes, and uh, Mr. Aiden, you're familiar with what evidence the state would use against you if they were prosecuting you on the first citizens case you know what evidence the state has against you. Yes, sir. And do you think with that evidence it's possible a jury could convict you? Yeah, I guess so. Okay. And then I will be glad to accept, first of all, I do find there's a sufficient factual basis for me to accept under all three charges. I do find that there, um, on the Alford plea, on the first citizen's case, um, I do find that you are getting the benefit of the bargain in that matter and that the state is recommending a two-year sentence and this carries up to 10 years um, and is also recommending that these run concurrent. Um, so I do find that you're, you're getting a significant benefit and I'll accept the claim in North Carolina versus Alford. So you've got 10 days from today's date if you wanted to appeal the convictions. Mr. Ratson? If you're inclined to accept the recommendation, Your Honor, I don't have anything else. How much time does he have credit for? Your Honor, on the distribution of methamphetamine, he bought it out the next day. The other two minutes of November, it's like November 20th of 2021. Um, we know what the date calculation is on that one. I'm sorry, I forgot to look that up. I can pull it up. 95 days, Your Honor. So 95 days on the Grand Larson's, uh, two days on the Both grand larcenies is two years. These are concurrent, giving credit for 95 days already served. The sentence on the methamphetamine charge is also two years and is also concurrent, giving one day credit for time served. Sorry, I believe it was two days, Your Honor. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Two days. Got it. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, good luck to you, Mr. A. Thank you. Christian News T.Y. I'm Tony Kanyes. Is there any newsworthy events we will get them to you as soon as possible? If not, you can follow us on Christian News T.Y. Facebook, you can follow us on YouTube, and you can follow us on our website.